Professor, welcome to In Business. Uh, do you believe the Super Committee is going to succeed in the next few weeks? I think it's going to be very tough. It looks to me like there's a very big gap between Republicans and Democrats at this point. Well, the New York Times is reporting today that Republicans have said that they're open to some form of tax revenue, of revenue creation, I should say, um, and doing that through changing tax deductions. From that, well, that's does that make you sign. more optimistic? Well, uh, it doesn't surprise me because I've had some conversations with members of the committee, but uh, uh, I think the key thing is, from a Republican point of view, not to raise tax rates. If there's going to be additional revenue, it's going to come from broadening the tax base, from putting caps on the deductions and exclusions. Now, you've written on this. You had an op-ed with the idea that you could actually lower the rate while still boosting revenue through changes it, to the tune of, what, $500 billion over 10 years. And how did you do that? How could we do that? Well, as you know, there are lots of features of the tax law that really are forms of government spending that we just happen to have written into the tax law. Uh, the government wants to encourage people to have larger mortgages or to have uh, employer-provided health insurance. It doesn't subsidize that by writing a check to anybody, but it allows us to uh, reduce our tax uh, bill by taking deductions or by excluding certain income. So my idea is that we can put a ceiling on that, allow people to keep the deductions, keep the mortgage deduction, keep the charitable deduction, uh, keep the employer payments for health insurance, but just limit the amount of tax benefit that each taxpayer can get relative to that taxpayer's adjusted gross income. And if you do that, then you can raise a substantial amount of revenue, some of which can be used then to cut tax rates and boost the economy. Now, given where we are in the economic recovery right now, what would the impact of implementing your plan be on the consumer? I think it would be positive because you would have lower tax rates, which would encourage businesses and individuals um, to but if you're broadening the which base, you're, you're sharing more of the burden, perhaps with those who, who, who can't really take it on. Well, but you're, you're lowering tax rates. So the idea is not to increase anybody's uh, tax bill directly, but to collect additional revenue by stimulating economic growth, by stimulating economic activity. And that's what we saw happened after the very big tax cuts in the Reagan years. And that is your model for this, what you helped with the Reagan administration carry out? In 1986, President Reagan and the Democratic uh, House Speaker Tip O'Neill agreed to bring down the top tax rate from 50 percent to 28 percent, and at the same time to broaden the tax base. And the way those figures were calculated at the time, they said, well, what they lose by lowering the tax rate, they'll make back by broadening the tax base. But in fact, revenue actually rose very substantially in the years after that because the lower tax rates gave very big incentives for individuals to yeah. work more, to uh, not take uh, tax deductions, and to take income in taxable form rather than infringe benefits. Uh, Professor, it's, it's an interesting idea, um, an interesting uh, op-ed there in, in the journal as well. Thanks for making the time to explain it to us.